Hi, my name is Richard Bilderbeek. I'll be practicing a presentation here I will give at Open Science Uppsala on today, that's 15th March 2024. And this is a discussion in which we discuss the national guidelines for promoting open science in Sweden. And these are actually two presentations, this is the neutral one. I will also be picked as the person that will criticize these uh, guidelines, but that will be another presentation. And another one from Open Science Uppsala will uh, defend and glorify them. So that's a discussion, but this presentation is neutral. I intend this to be neutral, it should be an introduction to that discussion. So this presentation you can find it on the GitHub repository linked somewhere. Uh, it's public domain because I care more about open science than about me getting the glory. Let's talk about the national guidelines for promoting open science in Sweden. And I will now just call them the guidelines from now on. So the guidelines were developed because there was a problem. Uh, the European Union, they wanted open science. And in Sweden, that's the country we were talking about here, uh, there's a gap between the current practices and the ideals of open science. So the guidelines were developed and released the 15th of January of 2024 and this was accompanied by a report uh, also on the same day uh, which contained a bit of background information. Um, you can already see from the top that it's, uh, it's in Swedish, they're not translated yet, although that was two months ago. But hey, they're there. So. I won't translate all these sweet. I will uh, this presentation. I will translate everything. Uh, maybe I make a small translation error. You you have to forgive me for that. Um, although my Swedish is proper, maybe there are some new ones I missed. Although I have had a Swedish person check my translations. So these were the six proposed uh, guidelines, and also these are translation of these six chapters. So it's like six parts. Um, in the in the guidelines, uh, which was about open access to scientific publications, to research data, open research methods, open learning resources, the public participation in the research process, guidelines on that, and guidelines on the infrastructures that support open science. So this is a list, I put this in a figure here, so the infrastructure that supports open science is the box here. This should help to make these three things in it work together. For example, open access uh, that should be allowed by the infrastructure and should work together. Um, like the open access to scientific publications should work together with the research data and work together with the research methods. Like they should be combined in some kind of way because, well, they, they should all be fair which is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Um, so if they can work together, well, then they have a nice, uh, then they can, like, information can freely flow from A to B. Also, the open learning resources, that, like that training materials, for example, should also be fair data, um, findable, accessible, and, uh, and also the, the public should have some participation in the research process. So these are guidelines about these six points, guidelines have been developed. And I go through them here now, uh, more or less one by one, I've summarized them a bit. So, the guidelines for the open access to scientific publications is that all publications must be open access and have an open license. And that the publication cost is not paid by the readers nor the authors, and whatever those costs are, they should be transparent and they should decrease in time. And whatever that open license is, the authors will hold the copyright, or copyleft if you want to call it like that, to the publication. The guidelines on open access to research data suggest or recommend that research data should always be as open as possible and as limited as necessary and should be fair. So of course sensitive data should be, uh, cannot be uh, dumped online, um, so they should be like protected in a way but it should still be accessible in a way. It should be possible to work with open data, so that means 
um, it should be also like findable and uh, supported by universities or whatever um, institute. They, they should be recommended to do so or it should be encouraged at least. This open data should be managed in a cost effective way. Uh, not in a cost ineffective way. No, the guideline says it's better to do this in a cost effective way. And the researchers get support to make data fair from, for example, um, universities. The guidelines on open methods are that research methods, protocols and program code should also be as open as possible and as limited as necessarily, documented sufficiently and be fair findable, accessible, and interoperable, uh, reusable. Also, researchers get support there too to make their methods fair and they get support from universities. So with open methods what is meant here is that you write down everything you do, you publish your code, you publish your protocol, everything as open as the entire experiment description. Um, for example, your logbook, I guess it needs to be scanned, I don't know. The research methods should use open licenses, be shared and shared in a standardized way. So no patented or um, commercial research methods here. Uh, no, it should all be open, shared and uh, should all be open. But different fields can develop their own standards for sharing their research methods. Um, so for example, I've seen a protocol in bioinformatics um, Oh, like it, it was a standard in, write, in writing down protocols in lab experiments, like uh, steer this 10, centi 10 minutes, and it was like a kind of a language um, that you could describe the experiments in, an, in a crystal clear way. And that there was just a script in the end that you could read uh, as a human too, but you could also read as a, it's also computer friendly. So the guidelines on open learning resources is that they should be encouraged and, and adopting them should be coordinated. They should have an open license and be fair. And it is recommended to consider if maybe a joint platform for open learning resources is needed. Uh, maybe it already exists, but maybe um, it needs to be created. Uh, maybe there's no need. So there's someone needs to. It's recommended that someone thinks about this question. The guidelines recommendation on public participation in the research process is that when it's relevant, the public should become more involved in the research project process, and that research performing organizations should offer support for public participation in the research process. And there should be more funding to reward people that do citizen science more. So citizen science, that, mean, uh, that means that you do an experiment in which you, for example, use the common people, non-scientists, to do the measurements or to do observations. That's a citizen science you, uh, that you use non-scientists to help you out in your uh, experiment. And the sixth and final uh, proposed guideline is th that's recommended on infrastructure that supports open science is that open science infrastructure should be financed nationally. There should go more money to non-profit infrastructure, uh, especially for open access publishing. There should be infrastructures developed for open research methods. And there should be a standard developed that links together the publication, the research data and the research method to link those three together. That's what the infrastructure should do. So having gone through this list, you can conclude that Sweden likes open science. Um, and this is the neutral presentation, so these are all the references, they're not formatted very nicely. But this is about what I would say that is in the guidelines for promoting open science in Sweden. Um, with that being said, I wish you a very good day. Bye!